so glad to see everyone here because it is truly an, an international day for us today. We have some folks from the west coast of the United States and we have a gentleman here from Madrid and I have to say that I have been to Madrid and it's a very lovely place. And then we also have some, I say local because I'm in Maryland at the moment and we have some folks from Pennsylvania. So with no further ado, let's get started with what we are going to talk about today and that is data management. And our learning objectives for today, we're going to look at data management with process and rationale. What do we do in a data management capability? And there are certain differences in, let's say, process, but not necessarily the foundational things. It depends on what technology you're using. So I'm going to identify the roles and responsibilities of the data management team. We're going to look at protocol design and development process and how data management really feeds into that. Looking at our CDM startup activities and speak to case report form design, data tracking, collection and data entry and capture and again that will maybe speak to the differences between electronic data capture or EDC versus paper. We'll look at data review. Just this morning, we were uh, my team that I work with, uh, we were reviewing data during a soft lock environment for a study and the validation that we do with our data and queries and how we um, identify aberrant data. We'll look at the MEDRA dictionary, which is the preferred dictionary to query adverse events and medical history if that's required. Database lock and the release to biostatistics is an important concept and an, and an important activity which basically all of our data management processes lead to that final event. We'll also examine adverse event reporting and the reconciliation of serious adverse events with other databases and any kind of suggestions for those of you that would like to look into what is happening currently and what might be the trend in the future. But we all have to follow the good clinical practices and we know that GCP are the rules of conducting good, clean and ethical research and basically it started with the declaration of Helsinki after the World War II war crimes. And the purpose of good clinical practice is to protect the rights, safety, and welfare of research subjects and patients and to comply with global requirements. And I have some of the things bolded here because they would apply directly to data management and that is obviously to ensure the integrity of the clinical data. So the principles of ICH GCP are that they are conducted in accordance with ethical principles and we always look at risk versus benefit and weigh those out and, and there are a lot of other disciplines within clinical research that, that specifically look at that risk versus benefit component and the right safety and well-being of all trial subjects and patients are considered and should be considered as an utmost priority. The trials are, are clinical trials, our protocol should be scientifically sound and described in a detailed protocol. And in my experience, there have been some very, very robust scientifically identified protocols and then there have been others that, that haven't been as well described and sometimes that makes it very difficult, number one, for us to determine the data collection and number two, to actually come to any kind of solid conclusions after the study is completed. Informed consent is most important. Informed consent is one of those issues that have been found to cause issues when there are regulatory audits and informed consent has very strict rules and in many cases they're not always followed and if there's not a appropriate informed consent for participants in the study that can really rule your entire study to be a default and again we have the confidentiality of participants and in the US we have the HIPAA rules and we have confidentiality in Europe as well and significant efforts being made to protect that confidentiality of participants. Well, we know that the International Con Conference on Harmonization or ICH for short was basically in to harmonize the application process and labeling of our, our investigational and medicinal products. Before the ICH came into being, when we would make submission, we in every company would have, let's say, different 
templates for their final study reports, but we would make let's say our submission, when I worked for Zeneca Pharmaceutical, it was headquartered in the UK, we would make submission, let's say to Ireland or those places, and then we would get, let's say, approval there. But if we went to any other countries, we might have to reorganize, redo everything all over again. So the ICH was really to to harmonize things, to facilitate those activities so that you don't reinvent the wheel every time. In the U.S., the FDA and other regulatory officials, the roles and responsibilities, again, priority is to protect the health and safety of our consumers, enforce the food, drug, and cosmetic regulations and laws, and also to regulate the processes through which evidence of product safety and efficacy are developed. 